after the service, I have some verses uh, printed out that I think you would find a blessing and uh, some things about hope. Uh, don't let me forget to pass those out afterwards. The book of Jeremiah says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. Yeah, that'd be a good verse to memorize. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. In Hebrews chapter 6, God talks about hope, and he talks about the anchor of our soul. That sounds like a good thing to me. Let me read in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13, and down to the end of the chapter. Hebrews 6, verse 13 says, For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. That's Abraham obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. God gives us hope. Amen. Now, the, the picture I, I see there in, in verse 20 he talks about the anchor of the soul. It's like Jesus put the anchor over his shoulder, and as he went to heaven, he took that anchor and he put it in a rock, and that's, that's where it's been ever since. Jesus is our hope. He's the anchor of our soul. And he says, what he's saying here, and sometimes these words are a little bit hard to understand, but he, he's saying here that it's based on his character. You're basing your hope on the very character of God. And he uses the word there, immutable. That word means unchangeable. God's character cannot change. He never has a bad day. You know, God is always good. God is always good. And God is always holy and great. And uh, our hope is in that rock, the rock of our Lord. It's based on his character. It's the anchor for our soul. And what a blessing as you think about that. And right through Scripture, there's, there's verses that talk about this hope we have because it's found in the Lord. Now, some of these verses I've, I've written out so that I can just read them to you. For instance, Psalm 43, 5, the writer asks himself, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. You know, sometimes it's a bit scary when people are talking to themselves. Nowadays, they're usually talking on the phone. But uh, this is a good way to talk to yourself. You get cast down, just start talking to yourself. Get yourself in the corner and say, what are you doing? Cast down. Hope in God. Your hope is in the very character and person of God. In uh, Romans chapter 15, verse 4, a verse we learned a while back, whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Our hope is based on God. It's based on his word. God wrote it down so that you don't have to just wonder about hope. You can know. He's written it down. Uh, we have hope because of his character, because of his word, because of his son. 1 Peter 1.3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Uh, there, there's a, an amazing thing. Our hope is because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. And like he says in Corinthians, if Christ is not risen, we are of all men most miserable. Well, listen, Christ is risen, and we have hope because of it. What a blessing. Uh, we have hope because of God's Holy Spirit. Man, you can, you, can, you can look at every aspect of God and see what our hope is. Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope 
fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. We don't have just have hope, we abound in it. We have so much we can share it with others. <laughs> That's a blessing, isn't it? Uh, the hope that we have is, is based on our Lord. I, I want to particularly take some time tonight and look at three particular areas. If you're saved tonight, you have hope because of God's presence. God says that when you get saved, he takes up residence in you. That's kind of spooky. That's kind of strange. But boy, I'm glad. Uh, he says in 1 Corinthians 1, 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He said, that, that's a mystery. That's a, that's a strange thing that the world can't understand. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And what a blessing that when, when we trust Christ as our Savior, He, he comes in. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, what? He puts it as a question. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own? Don't, don't you understand that? <laughs> you're a Christian. God's in you. Now, you have hope because of God's presence. Look with me, if you would, in Matthew chapter 14. And I, I want to illustrate this and, and expand it a little bit. Ma Matthew chapter 14 is the account when the disciples are in the boat and Jesus comes to them walking on the water. Matthew chapter 14. Let me read starting in verse 22. It says, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him on the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of, of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. So here's the, here's the setting. The setting. Now they're in a storm. And Jesus is coming up to them, walking on the sea. Now their reaction is, verse 26, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying, it is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. Here's these tough fishermen. They're, they're crying. Whoa. You know, I can't do it because of my voice, but uh, they, they were upset. Now, Jesus' presence can be a little bit frightening at times. I mean, let's just be honest about it. God's presence can be a little bit scary. He, he's so amazing. Um, some people get angry at God's presence. You know, God's Holy Spirit begins to convict them of sin. You ever known somebody under conviction? You, you don't want to be in the same house with them. Uh, man, they, they can be hard to live with. Uh, it can be tough. But listen, when, when God comes to you, he then speaks to you. Look at the next verse, verse 27. Straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Those are, those are comforting words. Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Um, we need to understand that Salvation comes when we recognize that truth, it is I. Who it is that's come to us. Jesus comes to us and, and encourages us. Uh, Peter, in the next verse, answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Uh, when you know it's Jesus, you don't have to be afraid. You know, it, it's a scary thing for a, a person to come to a point in their life where they realize... I'm bound for hell. These people, this preacher, this Bible, they've been saying I need to trust Jesus. Uh, man, that, that's a scary thing. It's a commitment for life and for eternity. And a lot of people, you know, they're, they're like those disciples. They, they don't know what to do. But Jesus speaks to us. He speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through his Holy Spirit. He says, it's I. Come unto me. Let me give you rest. Let me help you. When he speaks, you'll know what to do. Uh, verse 28, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. He said, come. And you know, that's still Jesus' call today. Come, come unto me. And what a blessing. He says, if we'll come to him, there's no one who'll refuse. 
I've talked to people who said, oh, I'm too sinful. I, I've done too much. It, you know, I had this opportunity. Listen, Jesus says, come. He says, I'll not refuse you. I'll not refuse you. If you're not saved, invite him into your boat. John 1.12 says, but as many as received him, invite him in, receive him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I don't know it doesn't apply exactly, but in Revelation 3.20, it uses uh, the picture of standing at the door of a church and knocking. Well, you can picture that as your own heart. He, he's calling. He's, he's wanting entrance. And when you receive him, he changes you. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. God changes us. You become God's child. Uh, Corinthians, he says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Well, who makes you new? God does. It's not by human efforts, not by works of righteousness, which, which we've done. The Bible says he takes up residence and he'll never leave. Uh, the book of Hebrews, he says, I found this interesting. I, I, I always quote the end of the verse. But the beginning of the verse, he says, let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have, for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Isn't it interesting, that the contrast he makes there between trusting the Lord and being covetous, trusting the world. Uh, maybe that's been your case. You've been trusting the world. You've been looking for the world to bless you. Listen, uh, the world will eat you up and spit you out. <laughs> God will save your soul. God loves you. Um, when you trust him, he says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. We have hope because of his presence. But even more than that, we have hope because in his presence, he communicates to us. He speaks to us. Now, that's one of the many promises that, that he makes. You know, if a person can lose hope, the reason is they've never really had hope. In, in Ephesians, uh, he says, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12, At that time you, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. Uh, you remember Hebrews? He talked about the covenant he made with Abraham. and you know, That promise was good because of God's character and his God's oath. So they, they were strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in, this, in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are now made nigh by the blood of Christ. The only reason a person can lose hope is because they didn't really have hope in the first place. In Christ, that's a hope you, you cannot lose. It's a hope that is built on who God is and what he said. We have hope because of his presence. We also have hope because of his promises. Now that's, uh, that, that's what I've been saying. Uh, because of what he says. But I want to go through a couple here with you tonight. Um, yeah, as we believe God and, and cooperate with him, he gives us hope in everyday situations. You know, it's one thing to know, yeah, I've got hope, I'm going to go to heaven. But you need to have hope uh, when you're you know, going to work and dealing with your family and, and dealing with your, your health and you know, all the things of life. You need hope in everyday situations. In Romans chapter 6 and, uh, and verse 6, let me just get there. Romans chapter 6 and, and verse 6. Here's a blessing. God says, when you trust Christ as your Savior, you have freedom from the power and penalty of sin. Romans 6, verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Our old man crucified with him, freed from sin. Uh, verse, all of these verses apply, but uh, verse 13, I think, or 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under grace. Yeah, what a promise. God says, when you trust Christ as your Savior, you, you die with Christ. You're buried with Christ. You're raised to walk in newness of life. That old way, you're not subject to that anymore. One of the things you'll find, death releases you from every obligation you have. <laughs> All right? 
It doesn't matter. They can try and collect all they want. You won't care. You're dead. And, and when you die spiritually, when, when you die in Christ, it sets you free from your old master, the devil and sin and self and so on. Uh, what a promise. We have freedom from the power and penalty of sin. Now, the difficulty is, is living it. You know, just trusting God enough to, to say, well, Lord, I'll, I'll trust you. Uh, here's another one, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. This is one of my favorites. I guess at some time I, always, I probably say every one of them is my favorite. I don't know. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Now, what that phrase is saying is, you're not the lone ranger, okay? You're not the only one who's ever been tempted like this. It's common. But God is faithful, who will not suffer. That means allow. God won't allow you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Here's a promise from God. He says, you'll never be tempted above that you're able. You know, sometimes we, we call God a liar. We say, oh, it was just too great a temptation. I couldn't resist it. Yes, you could if you're saved. God says there's, there's a way of escape. What a blessing. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 4, he tells us that he personally helps us in our times of need. Hebrews 4, verses 15 and 16. Here's another precious promise. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. That's saying he understands what you're going through. But was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace. Folks, we can come because he understands and he cares. We have a compassionate Savior that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Listen, don't think God doesn't understand. God became a man just like you and I. Just, he, he, he understands the temptations we face, and yet he was victorious over them. Listen, we're not going to a failure. We're going to the victorious Christ. We have the promise that he'll personally help us in our time of need. Uh, in James, just a couple pages to the right, chapter 1 and, and verse 2, he says he'll make... Trials and troubles help us. Boy, that's, you might say, well, that's not the kind of help I want. Well, listen, you're going to get trials and troubles. You might as well get some good out of them. James chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. The next verse. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Boy, I go to that resource a lot. Uh, it gives us the promise that trials and troubles can help us if we'll, if we'll trust the Lord. In Romans chapter 8, you probably know this verse by heart. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. See, that's what God's doing in our lives. He's conforming us to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, what a blessing we have. Uh, he makes things work for our good. Uh, there's so many. In, in John, he talks about how we can have God's peace and joy in every situation. John chapter 14, verse 27. These are all great verses to, to know. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. God has peace. He's the God of hope. He's the God of peace. Quite often in, in John, he says things like that. John 15, 11, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. John 16, 33, these things have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. It's I, be not afraid. <laughs> you know, what a blessing as, as we see that the Lord is with us. The Lord is speaking to us. And he's given us promises. And these promises are immutable. They're based on the character of God. And folks, when we fail, God tells us we can have hope renewed. 
we confess our sin, he's faithful, he's just. He'll forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, he says in, in first that, that same passage there, uh, my little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. He's there to help us. He's there to help us in our time of need. He's there to help us when we fail. Like we saw there in, in Romans, God's plan is that we be like Jesus. And I want to tell you something about the word hope when God uses it. When God uses the word hope, it's a sure thing. It's not like gambling. It's not like the lottery or, you know, all the things the world does. Uh, this is the hope that God gives. His plan is that we be like Jesus. His plan is also that we be with Jesus, with Jesus. And that, that's the third thing that I want you to think about tonight. Um, we have hope because of his presence. We have hope because of his promises. We also have hope because of his appearing. The Bible tells us, God tells us, Jesus is coming again. Amen. And in Titus 2.13, he, he calls it that blessed hope. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Folks, no matter how bad this world gets, Jesus is coming again. Amen. Jesus is coming again. Now, what a blessing that is. And he said he'll, he'll take us to be with him. You know, the Bible indicates it could be today. We use the word imminent. <laughs> I mean, it could happen any time. He could take us to be with him. Uh, are you ready? Is he your savior? You see, he's going to, some, uh, some will be with him because he'll come and take us away. Uh, John chapter 14, you know, Jesus was comforting them. He said, uh, he said to them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now for some, yeah, they won't die. In the moment, the twinkling of an eye, you know, taken to be with the Lord. Uh, what a joy to look forward for, uh, to, you know, to that, that event. I need to ask you, is your faith in Jesus? Is your faith in Jesus? Listen, you won't get there by, by yourself. For most of us in uh, time and eternity, we're going to be with him by death's door. Death's door. That's kind of a scary thing. I remember talking to my dad when he was in his 80s, and he said it's kind of a strange thing to, to think you probably won't live t more than 10 years. And uh, he said it's kind of a different thing. He didn't say scary thing. <laughs> death's door. For believers, death's door is the entrance to heaven. You know, it's really not that bad when you think about it in that way. Uh, so many verses, you know, absent from the body, present with the Lord. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Yeah, you know, we can see without Christ there's no hope. Uh, strangers from God's promises having no hope and without God in the world. That's not where I want to be. Listen, I can, I can have a fake hope. A lot of people do. You know, I, I, talk, I hear people talk and, you know, oh, I'm not afraid of death and I've been good and all these foolish things. Listen, do not ignore God and, and, and his word. Without Christ, there is no hope. In 1 Thessalonians 4, he says, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, people who've died, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Without Christ, there's no hope. But with Christ, we have every hope. Amen. And what a blessing it is. We need to believe the God of hope. Now, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me ask you tonight, where is your hope? The psalmist wrote, I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. If your hope's in the Lord, it'll grow. If your hope's not in the Lord, you don't have hope. I hope you'll trust the Lord tonight, if you haven't already. Let's go to him in, in prayer. With heads bowed in, in an attitude of prayer, maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart. Maybe you need to trust him tonight.
Uh, don't put it off. The Bible says we, uh, we can't guarantee tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for hope. Thank you for our hope in Jesus because of his resurrection. Thank you for the hope of the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you that our hope is in you and that you never change. Lord, that you cannot lie. Thank you so much. Father, if there are those here tonight that are not saved, Father, please help them to trust you. I pray that your Holy Spirit would convict them and draw them to yourself. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing the song that always comes to my mind when I...